If you have been doing the 2A thing long enough, and I suppose you'd also have to hang out with people, so there's prerequisite there, then you've heard this one before. That scope is not zeroed for my eye. Somebody shows up, maybe they got a prescription, maybe they don't, but in some way, shape, or form, that thing with their eye changes the way the information is relayed from the scope. Yeah, this is one of your guys' ideas. To be honest, these days you guys write like half of my material anyway. <laughs> so if you got an idea, contact me. Maybe we'll go out and do it. But I guess the guy was having some co-workers that were parroting this information. He believes it to be crap. For the record, I also believe it to be crap, but that's what we're gonna be testing in today's video. So initially, the idea was, hey, you should go out and get a bunch of different people with different prescriptions and have them shoot. And the idea was that you would yield differences. The only problem with that idea is that your assumption is that everyone can shoot. We know that to not be the case. Since we know that I can't shoot, then at least my inability will be consistent. So what we're going to do in today's video is change the way my eye works. And to do that, we're gonna shoot this rifle. This is a Bergera B14. It's set up in the Wooks chassis. And thank you for the lighting, sir. Good timing. There's a full video out on this one. I'll have it linked in the description box down below. Probably interactive card as well, so I won't belabor the specs, but it's a 6.5 Creedmoor. We're gonna be shooting at 50 yards. And initially, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna shoot it regularly. And then, I have borrowed a set of my girlfriend's glasses. And while these are fairly schnazzy looking glasses, I can tell you that she is absolutely blind as bad. <laughs> I know that I need a new table. All right, the thing looks terrible. It's dilapidated, it's falling apart. It's getting in the way. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. I've been putting off getting a new one because lumber is expensive, but I just, I can't do it anymore. It needs to be replaced. So bear with me. Before we move any farther along in the video though, I want to do a real quick anatomy recap because I think this is going to be important for what we talk about later in the video. So first the anatomy of a scope and the anatomy of the eye that is important. So the first thing that you'll notice when you look at a scope is the large objective lens. It's the lens that gathers the light from the environment and then that light passes through a series of lenses to include the magnification unit and the reticle, and they're not necessarily in that order, depends on which type of scope you have, whether it passes through the magnification unit first or the reticle first, not pertinent for today's discussion, just wanted to make a distinction there. That then is going to pass through the ocular lens, that's the lens that's closest to you. After it leaves the scope, it's going to pass through the lens of the eye and then be mapped onto the retina of your eye. And that retina is then going to talk to the optic nerve that is then going to talk to your brain. A properly manufactured high magnification scope will have two additional focus adjustments on it. One will be the ocular adjustment located at the rear of the scope and the other will be the parallax adjustment located usually on the side of the scope. Someone with a prescription has some kind of deformity in the lens either that is generated by the suspension fibers of the lens of the eye or some inherent defect to the lens itself. And that defect causes the light that is passing through the lens to be mapped incorrectly onto the retina, giving them some kind of image that is not representative of the environment. So we use corrective lenses to change that aspect ratio. So if you put a pair of glasses on, that's why you see kind of funky if it's not the correct prescription. Speaking about scopes, it's time to pay the bills. Tezlong is an electric device manufacturer that has been featured here on the channel previously. That video focused on their bore scopes, and I'll have it linked in the description box down below for your viewing pleasure if you're interested in learning more. They've done multiple spins on the device, including a standalone, a laptop, and a mobile phone compatible unit to fit just about any application that you would use it for. Dude, you're really weird. Designed in America with an international team of 40 plus designers and engineers for fast live support to help you get the most out of your experience. Special thanks to Teslong for making today's video possible. Just some cheapy bull crap probably came home with me from a lab somewhere.
we're just going to shoot pairs on this. There's no reason to shoot full groups. We're just doing a relative comparison. Alrighty, here is number two, a fairly weathered coach case. And it looks like these ones have been through a bit of hell, but here they are. And, oh, sweetheart. Oh, okay, we're gonna have to be really quick on this because uh, this is gonna give me a headache, like hardcore. So, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put the glasses on and then I'm going to adjust the rear ocular that we talked about earlier to bring the target into focus. And then we're gonna shoot the group. I have to do this in stages because I'll, else I'm gonna puke everywhere. Okay, so I have it adjusted, but here's the thing. There is a major magnification difference, as in like twice the distance probably through the glasses. We'll get to that later. Ooh, never doing that again. So this is not a thing. And if we think critically for a second about the relationship between the rifle, the scope, and the eye, then we can uncover why this could never have been a thing. So if we think about adjusting a scope to a rifle, what we're doing is generating a relative relationship between the optical device and the physical rifle and its performance downrange. When we receive information through the scope, that information is, again, representative of that physical relationship. That does not change. It is absolute. Once that information passes through that scope and we receive it on the other end, our eye applies some kind of thing to it, as in our, our eye receives it and our brain maps it. Whatever you do to that data, after it leaves the scope, does not matter. You've applied some kind of correction factor to that data packet, and it will always be on top of what the data originally was. So the original integrity of the data is never degraded. So when you put a prescription over a funky eye, what it is doing is an attempt to correct it back to the original data. That does not change the original physical relationship between the scope and the rifle. They are absolute. There are a few things, though, that we can talk to about how this could manifest itself, this phenomenon could manifest itself in the real world. The first one would be uh, someone is consistently screwing something up. So I have seen people literally zero their guns high and right because they have such a consistent anticipation of recoil that they hit the bullseye consistently, but their scope is actually high and right off because they've just been doing it so wrong so long that they've gotten good at being wrong. So if that's working for you, then fine. But generally speaking, when you hand that person a properly zeroed rifle, they're going to hit, you guessed it, low and left. We're back here a little bit farther than we normally would be. The uh, The final station is about 450, but I've been getting horrific uh, poison ivy from that station. I don't know how I've been getting it, how I've been getting messed up in the oil, but it's, it's really bad. So we're just shooting off the tailgate today. Coincidentally, I found a spot at about 500 yards. So... No rear bag. The other possibility is that they've set the scope up wrong to begin with. So the proper way to set up a magnified optic, if you've got a prescription, or I suppose this would be independent of whether you have a prescription or not, but the proper way to set up a 
magnified optic is to shoot at a known distance, which I hope that you're all doing every single time you zero a gun anyway. You then dial the parallax to the proper distance, not play with the parallax until it's in focus. If you're shooting at 50 yards, dial the parallax to 50. Once the parallax is set to the correct distance, do not touch it. If the image does not look crisp, then you go to the rear ocular adjustment and spin that until the image comes into focus. Do not use the parallax to do that. The reason that is important is because if the parallax is not set to the correct distance and you're using it to make the image more crisp instead of using it as a crude like ranging uh, apparatus, then what you've done is delineated your data. So you're, the scope thinks you're looking at something at 50 yards when it's really 500 yards away. That's not a good situation. And again, you've delineated your data and there's a source of error there. In closing today, I'm gonna to leave y'all with a tool that you can use in the future to deal with people who are feeding you this kind of bullshit. Simply ask them to define the mechanism by which this could occur. And usually when you do that, you end up with one of two answers. The first one isn't, oh, I don't really know. And that person's being the most honest. But the second one is some kind of more bullshit work through that outs itself as not grounded in the laws of physics. And in doing so, you've now identified that that's not a person that you should listen to going forward.